let's picture the problem so we have uh, two concentric cylinders and the inner cylinder is a metal rod which has a radius A and the outer cylinder is a shell which is a radius B and between these two cylinders we have an empty space so <clears throat> the inner uh, cylinder has a uh, charge density uh, plus lambda and the outer has a minus charge density and minus lambda they have the same charge uh, per length in the uh, in, in this direction so to calculate the electric field we separate this problem into three regions the first region is the inner region of the uh, metal rod but since we know that inside each metal every metal electric field is zero so you don't need to calculate the electric field it's right away just uh, A is equal to zero inside when R is less than uh, A and for R between A and B uh, we pick a point which is a distance R to the center of the axis of the cylinders and we pick we choose a imaginary Gaussian surface because of the cylindrical symmetry of the problem this Gaussian surface will be a cylinder let's take it is, it is a height h and um, of course the radius is r because this is the distance of the point that uh, we want to calculate the electric field to the uh, central axis um, so what we do is first of course we calculate the electric flux through the side uh, uh, surface of the inner uh, of the uh, s1 surface this Gaussian surface cylinder but the thing is um, the area vector in every point on this side uh, surface is perpendicular to the surface and because of the symmetry the electric field will be in the same direction because we have a positive charge inside so the flux is this closed integral through the surface S1 and we don't even think about the uh, uh, top surfaces, top surface and the bottom surface of the cylinder because the electric field and the area vectors are perpendicular to each other in these tops and bottom surfaces so they contribute a zero flux so the only flux contributed is coming from the side area of the cylinder and it is just the strength of the electric field times the side area of the cylinder which is 2 pi r times h and by the Gauss's law this flux must be equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon zero but since uh, the height of the cylinder is h the amount of charge which resides inside this uh, Gaussian surface is just h times uh, lambda so this is the total charge inside and from this we can easily solve for e and e will be lambda divided by 2 epsilon zero times r so that means in the region between these two cylinders the electric field will decay as 1 over r uh, as you go away from the central axis so this is the expression in between the next question is what is the uh, electric field uh, when you pick up a point which is outside the uh, spherical shell so that means the radius will be larger than B because B is the radius of the outer shell and again uh, we follow the same uh, sc schedule that we choose a Gaussian surface which is a cylinder that passes through uh, the uh, cylinder <coughs> the, that passes through the uh, point that we calculate the electric field and everything is the same and the flux is the same with that one uh, E times 2 pi r h but when you come to the uh, the charge which resides inside this blue Gaussian surface it will be of course zero because we have a plus lambda charge distribution in the inner core and minus lambda in the outer shell so if you uh, add them you will have a zero net charge that means the electric field outside this cylindrical shells the cylindrical uh, metals conductors will be equal to zero so <coughs>
the next question is what is the electric potential at all uh, points well the electric potential at right on the surface of the outer shell we claim that it is equal to zero because uh, the potential at infinity is zero by definition and since there is no electric field outside then if you bring a charge from infinity to the surface of the outer shell there is no electric field so the uh, electric field line integral will be zero then we will have the same potential we must have the same potential at that of infinity at the surface of the outer shell so this is the reasoning that we should have the potential of the outer shell is equal to zero and next let's choose a point in between these two cylinders and the R is equal is in between A and B so what is the potential of that point which is inside uh, in between the cylinders let's take this point as a distance R to the center and well since we always define uh, the potential difference well, let's choose uh, a, a, a potential, a point which we know the potential, let's choose the potential difference between this point VR and the potential of the outer shell VB. Since we know the potential of VB, it's um, just a zero, and the definition goes like uh, the potential between any two points is nothing but the minus of the line integral uh, between these two points, line integral of the electric field. So we put R in the upper limit and the B in the lower limit and the thing is we know what the electric field inside we know what the electric field in between these two cylinders we already have calculated from the Gauss's law so next is just put VB is equal to zero because of the reasoning that we previously uh, considered and then uh, the next thing is just uh, replace uh, interchange these limits put uh, uh, B to top and R to bottom and then changes uh, the sign of the integral and inside we have e dot r from uh, e dot r we have 1 over r integral dr over r and it is very easy to take because 1 over r integral is just logarithm natural logarithm and if you put the limits of the integration we will have the final expression lambda divided by 2 epsilon 0 2 pi epsilon 0 times the natural logarithm uh, in parentheses B divided by R where R is the point in between these two cylindrical shells and of course the uh, the rest is what is the potential of the any point on the surface of uh, this uh, inner uh, cylinder metal cylinder you just put uh, R is equal to A in here and then the potential will be all the same through the volume of the inner cylinder because there is no electric field the electric field is zero so whatever the potential we have at the surface we will have the same potential in the inner region